Have you ever explored those ancestors who lived on the wrong side of the law? There are records for those ancestors. Now, if your ancestor unfortunately had run-ins with the law, if they were in prison, if they were in jail, that's really not so great for them. But for you as a researcher, it can be a real boost to your genealogy research. Let's take a, a little bit of time today and learn how you can explore prison and jail records to learn more about your ancestor. Hi, I'm Lisa Listen with Are You My Cousin? I'm striving to take the overwhelm out of your genealogy research. Now, before we start exploring prison and jail records, I'd love it if you would hit that subscribe button. It's in the bottom right hand corner. It does let you know when I have new videos posted here in the Are You My Cousin um, YouTube channel. Okay, guys, let's get back to talking about those um, black sheep ancestors, shall we say? So you have discovered that your ancestor was in prison or perhaps could have had a run in with the law. Did you know that they have prison records online? And specifically, you can find prison and jail records, um, those legal records over at ancestry.com. Now, many of these type of records um, are available offline as well within your own state and counties. Now, it does vary state by state as far as who, the, the, as far as their privacy laws that a state has. So some states will let you um, make them public after a certain amount of time. Others will lock it down and say, nope, never, <laughs> you don't get anything. So it really does depend. So before you jump into trying to explore um, prison records or jail records, those types of records online, make sure with your state, find out what's actually available out there if, as far as privacy is concerned. Um, to, so you don't spend time looking for records that maybe are not out there available for you to research. Okay, but today's video, we're going to be going over to Ancestry.com. I'm going to show you how to search for jail and prison records, and I'm going to show you what types of information you can find in those records. Guys, it can be pure genealogical gold. So let's head over to Ancestry.com, and then when we're done, I'll see you back over here on the YouTube channel. So now we're over here at Ancestry and I'm going to show you how to find prison or jail records for your ancestor because these can have a tremendous amount of information for you as a researcher and just fascinating reading guys. So to find those, if I'm not sure, I'm gonna go ahead over here to search and I'm gonna to go to the card catalog. Now, what I'm going to do is type in here under keyword prison and you can play around with the keyword and I'm going to hit search. And you see right away, they have 61 records. So not a ton, but they absolutely have these records. Now I can break these down into um, by country if I want to. I could go just to US, there are 39 US records. There For Europe, there are 19. For North America, there's 40. So I can break this down however filter these out however I particularly wish for. Now it's interesting, it looks like that this, the Auburn prison records here for New York and this great Meadow Correctional Facility records, they have been, had some new updates or newly added. So that's a good thing for us to know that they are actually adding new records for this. So what I wanna show you is what these records could hold. So again, you could, um, sort out by location or by time, but I'm just gonna leave it kind of broad. There are only 61, that's actually not hard to go through. And I wanna show you a couple different types. So one of the first ones I'm gonna show you is this Idaho. So this is a US record. This is the old penitentiary records, um, old for prison records out in Idaho. And just like all the databases, you can absolutely fill in if you have a particular ancestor. In this case, I'm just gonna actually browse through the records here to show you some interesting things that I found. So this is one of the things, and what you're gonna do is find folders and it'll tell you who the person is, what their crime was, the county. Look at this, guys, it shows, um, I'm gonna enlarge that so you can see it better. This is just the folder. This isn't even really the file, but it tells you um, any aliases they might have used. So that's an important piece of the puzzle too. I'm gonna jump over to one I found that was particularly interesting I wanted to show you. So this is one for Matt Crump. He was, his crime was second degree murder in the county of Washington, Idaho. And these are the dates 
from 1877 to 1896. So inside that file, here's what we find. I've got I'm gonna I've got it big so you can see it. So this is they have they include a description of the convict in his file. This is amazing. So this is um, we know when he got there. We know his name was Matt Crump. It says it checks off alias, but it doesn't give us another one. So perhaps that is not his real name. It could be an alias. So keep that in mind if, if perhaps this is your ancestor. He was in the county Washington, Idaho. We know that um, this was May. The term was May of 1896. And he is wanted. His crime was murder in the second degree. And he is sentenced to life imprisonment. At the age at which he was received into this prison, he was 19 years old. So what a shame that this this young man is going to be there for that long. So if we know in 1896 that he was 19, we can do the math, come up with his birth year. Look at this, guys. He was born in North Carolina. I did not pick this for the North Carolina example, but that's I thought that was interesting. So here he is in Idaho. He was a farmer. He served an apprenticeship. Since they checked that off and served as apprentice, possibly look for some apprentice records somewhere. He's five foot 10, dark haired or dark complected. He's 170 pounds, dark brown hair, dark uh, and brown eyes. He is single. His father, look at this guys. His father is living, yes. His mother is not living and she, he died. The mother died when he was nine years old. So at this point, the mother had been dead 10 years. So you can, at that point, go and look for um, death information on a, on a mother and that he left his parents home when he was 18 years old. So if you're watching, if you're looking at the census record and so once he's 18, he's no longer going to be in that parent's home. He has had religious instruction. He is a member of the Mormon church. He um, cannot read or write and he only attended school for one year. He is a moderate drinker. He was not, he's never been in prison before. And guys, we hit genealogy gold because we have his nearest relative is, it looks like H.C. Crump, his father. So we have a father is named and it tells us where he lives. He's in Canyon County, Idaho. It looks like Parma, Canyon County, Idaho. That's great. Then we get these kind of just general remarks on him to see what's there. Um, you know, his teeth are in pretty good shape. He doesn't wear a beard. We know his foot size, his shoe size was eight. Um, we know his left ear, he suffered frostbite at some point and has, his left ear looks different and he didn't have any property. So that's all really interesting information you would not have on him. Genealogically speaking, we got a father's name. We got um, an estimated birth date. We know where they were living. We know where he was born to look for those records. If he was born in North Carolina, whoops, so sorry. Since Matt Crump was born in North Carolina, as we see here, and we know his father's name, where's the next place we're gonna look for that next generation back? We're gonna to head to North Carolina, right? So fascinating records in that respect. So those are some of the things you can find. And then let's show you the next. May I introduce you to Matt Crump? This is his, his mugshot, guys. And it is nicely labeled down here and everything. It says sent to life and something. It, it tells I, the prison name looks like it's been been blurred out, but um, that's what he looked like. OK, guys, so let's go back and I'm going to show you um, another record that I thought was really interesting. Just some different types of information that you might find. This time we're going to actually look at an Irish, the Irish prison registers. These are a lot of fun too. Um, and these are interesting because guys, these are not just, these are not just men and women. I mean, men, you'll find women's records as well. So I'm just going to choose a, um, I'm just going to choose and go browse. So we'll look at Dublin here. Let's choose one of the female prisons. And let's just pick a year here. Let's try the second one down. All right, let me get us a little further over and see what we find in here. Let's take this one. Let me enlarge it for you a bit so you can see what it looks like here. Let me hide this strip down here. And so what you can see, this is 
These are the female prisoners who were committed for drunkenness. So they were drunk. And we have Ellen Barnes. She was, I think that's 56. Hang on, we'll, we'll get that a little bit clear. Or 36. We know that in 1848, this, these were all the admissions for July 19th in 1848, it appears. It looks like all these women who they, who were, who they committed them to, they are to be there for 24 hours. It tells if there's going to be a fine and when they were actually discharged. So it's kind of an interesting um, group of women. Actually, it makes you wonder what was going on if you had that many people being on. Um, this is 1901. If you had that many people who were admitted to jail for drunkenness during that time. So it's a but I do think it's a really interesting type of record to look at for that. So you can see. And it tells us who I would be interested to know who these people are, if they are people who were closely related to them or not. So you can see sometimes you'll find extra comments and observations over here, sometimes not. So it's interesting. I didn't see any on this one, but that's so the this is a great way, guys, find your female ancestors. Female ancestors absolutely were appearing on in these records as well. So that's how you're going to go about finding prison records and researching prison records on Ancestry.com. Again, they don't have a ton of records there. I mean, we have only 61 came up with our search, but we can know we have that. I'm going to try to search for jail. I'm just curious to see. So if you put in the term jail, do you get different, you can get different results. And it looks like just these top two, I'm not Jail and courthouse. Okay, so they might all have some some helpful bits there, but it looks like the top two would be more helpful than some of the others. So there are only four using that term. So you can play around with, with the terms that you're looking for. If you are researching records, perhaps European records, maybe use the your whatever the language you're researching in, maybe try that term here for prison. That may give you results that you might not pick up otherwise on that. So there you have it, guys. That is how to find prison and jail records and their collections over at Ancestry.com. Welcome back, guys. I hope you found that helpful. And for the next time that you go and look for those jail and prison records, I hope that it sort of stimulated your research juices, kind of helps you start to thinking ahead as to what, how you might incorporate those types of records into your own research. So before you head off and looking for those black sheep ancestors, hit that subscribe button down below if you don't mind. That way you do get notified when I post new videos and you don't miss any videos that I post here. Okay, guys, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.